You're a car guy here. Today we're going to do a review on the Innova 6030P handheld scanner. Now this is a neat little scan tool that'll do all the basic OBD functions, read codes, clear codes, show live data, and we'll be able to do ABS functions as well. What's really cool about this is that this has a Bluetooth ability so you can link it to your phone and uh, well, the way that works is there's an app that you will download in order to be able to uh, do this. And in the instructions, it has here the, the Repair Solutions 2 app. It's available both on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. You're going to just simply scan this. Then you can download it. Then you can link this right to your scanner, and then you can pull the codes right up on your phone. So really neat little tool. Uh, it's nice that you have the ability to Bluetooth it to your phone. And with the Bluetooth to your phone, what's great is it will give you repair instructions, most likely repair uh, cause, and even the average cost of things like an ignition coil or a spark plug, if those are kind of uh, issues that you may be having. So you'll be able to read and clear codes. You'll be able to look up uh, repair information. There's technical assistance help here. And you will be able to also see about what the average cost is for what may be going on with your particular vehicle. So pretty simple system. We're gonna get it out. We're gonna play with it, plug it into our OBD2 and see what this thing will do. Once you connect the tool to your OBD2 port and then turn on the ignition, it'll go through an auto link. Now I didn't have the ignition on when it first uh, started, so I don't know if it'll get a full link. We'll see that we've got the buttons right here. It's gonna tell us that we can download this. Right here, I'm seeing that I do have a pending code. So a pending code means this has not yet started to have an issue, but there's a pending code for a misfire. Cylinder two. And it can tell us some of the things. This is the freeze frame data, and you'll see there's 42 lines of data of what was happening when this pending code happened. What a pending code is, is that means that it the system sensed a possibility of a code, and it hasn't confirmed it yet. It has to happen a certain number of times within a certain amount of time in order for it to say, yes, this is an active code. So right now it's a pending code. We can go to our system status and show that I can do global OBD2, so there I can check my codes, clear my codes, or I can go to ABS and I can look in, say, yep, that's my vehicle. Say yes, it's gonna scan the ABS. Here I'll have a still ability control inhibit warning, probably had it. I can use my erase button here. It's gonna say, do I wanna continue? Hit yes. It erases that. Now it's going to rescan. See, no codes. Now I can go back to my main menu with the menu button here. And I have battery and alternator tests that can be done. So let's take a look here. I've got vehicle information, battery and alternator tests. I can do drive cycle procedures. So this is important after you've reset codes in order to be ready for an emissions test in many states, you need to run through a drive cycle and that checks to make sure that all the emission systems are working correctly. Service reset. So that's say I've got an oil change due and I need to reset it. I can sit that. Now, here it's gonna tell me that this one is manually done and it's gonna say, here's what you're gonna do with the instrument cluster, the setup button until the message center displays an oil life, and then hold the reset until new oil. Press and hold the reset, and it's gonna give me the new oil life. That's great instructions. And there's, of course, the firmware version. That's just gonna tell me, hey, what's the software and firmware version? tool library information and tool settings. So I can set change settings. Let's say I need to change to from standard to metric, or if I want to change the language, I can do any of those things uh, right there. Vehicle information, it's going to give me vehicle ID, maybe even available modules, global OD2 and traction control in this vehicle. Again, we can hit our main menu and go back there. Now we've got a live data button. 
Uh, this one, I'm still in the ABS, so we'll go back here, and let's go back to Global OBD2. We'll link in there. All right, it's just asking, hey, if I've uh, downloaded the repair solutions. So I've got my pending codes here. Now I can go to live data. And it's going to show me all the information that's happening right now. Calculated load. I can scroll through this for the various things. So if I'm trying to diagnose something, I can see what's going on. Now the vehicle's not running, so we're not going to see a ton of data. Engine RPM showing zero. Now, uh, battery and alternator test. That's going to run through and just make sure that, hey, my battery voltage and my alternator are looking right. Do a battery test. So, it's asking me to turn on the lights. We'll hit enter. It's using the lights to create a load on the battery, and I believe what it's going to do is check the voltage drop on the battery during the time that the lights are on. We'll see how this goes. Tells me now to turn off the lights. Hit check. Start the engine one time. And there it goes. Tells me that my battery is good. That's a really cool feature on this tool. In the OBD2, I can also clear codes and even these pending codes can be cleared so that yellow light indicates I've got pending codes a red light would indicate I have an active code uh, green no codes but so we go in there we'll get there so I'm gonna erase these pending codes okay, yes the race was successful. We'll hit enter again. It's going to check and make sure that I didn't have any other codes pop up. And now, so it's showing that there are no codes, but now look, this is my emission monitor status. Anytime you clear codes, it's going to clear these emission monitors, and those will have to go all green before this gets an emissions test. And that'll happen by driving it. Or I could go through and look at those drive cycle procedures that it showed right here. So I can look at what the complete monitors are and the incomplete monitors. So the oxygen sensor monitor and the catalyst monitor and the evap system monitor, all those have to reset after you've cleared codes. And that takes driving the vehicle. Now, here's it going to tell me all of it. Here is where it will tell me all of the requirements in order to get these to clear. Even what speeds to drive, what temperatures the coolant needs to be, the cold soak of eight hours. So these are not things that you're going to clear you know, one day. A lot of times the vehicle will have to sit overnight and then be driven. Very cool. This is awesome great little tool this will be great for your personal use um, for any of the vehicles that you have uh, now you know obd2 started in 1997 in the united states as a mandatory system and that'll allow this scanner every, any vehicle since 1997 you'll be able to scan clear codes you see we have the abs operation and then also with that repair information app the ability to go in and find what are the most likely causes and even what the price might be for those. Pretty cool tool for the price. Uh, I, I would highly recommend it. Uh, I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. Please like and share the videos and subscribe to the channel.